welcome to the Sukhoito Jihio, a course that takes drivers from the shores of Copacabana Beach to the vistas of Corcovado Mountain. I'm here to give you your first look and first drive of the spectacular 2017 Ford GT on the colorful streets of Brazil's marvelous city. Hello fellow Tarmac Thrashers, as we take a look at Turn 10's newest entry in its massive Forza series and the second game on the Xbox One. They have raced to get this ship before the big winter period. Sorry. With this game having a clear and direct plan of being the most in-depth, all-encompassing race that you could ever want, well for the four-wheeled kind anyway, and the team are more than experienced from both a technical and a passion level. This was evident with the frankly stunning job they did with Forza 5 in time for the Xbox One's launch, and even though it was not as groundbreaking as earlier Forza games, it was certainly a solid and showpiece for both the console and the team. Now, two years into the launch of this generation, both Turn 10 and more so the console has changed quite dramatically. From the well documented and present SDK state of the machine when launched have been covered before by myself and others. The wasted GPU reserve for Kinect, the always consistent and present development environment improvements along with one of the biggest if not ultimate benefits for any engine or development process, the tools have all drastically changed and for the better. With more resource freed up for use this has allowed the team to make Forza 6 in many ways the game 5 aspired to be. But the same solid and true mantras are present here, as in all of their games. 1080 60 is the target, and the team again hit this without any fault and any hiccups. I will not dwell on the performance side, as after many races in day, night, rain, multiple 24 cars swamping the screen, it never ever drops, stutters or falls. It is an absolute oak tree level of performance again, and aside the more post effect heavy scenes that start or end races, which is also the only time you see some minor tearing at the top section as it loads between the two, these run at 30 to allow an even more impressive display, it runs at the 60 rate constantly. Consistently. With that out of the way, a key area for a game that has its control so tightly wound into the update and response allows it to feel fast, responsive and accurate pretty much all the time. Like previous games, polling of the controller is done uncoupled from the rendering state and collects data from the player at a much faster rate than the 16.67 milliseconds refresh rate of 60Hz on the game's visuals. Using the now named and copyrighted Forza Tech Engine, this is a must nowadays. The simulation, like its previous two games in 5 and Horizon 2, runs at six times this rate, 360 hertz, or every 2.7 milliseconds, which allows the game to react and feel incredibly responsive in play. It also enables all these real-time calculations to happen within the game, which now includes a far more accurate wet weather simulation. Sadly, this is fixed in races and not dynamic as per Forza Horizon 2, but the 60 FPS has to have sacrifices, and this is one of a few. But when it does rain, the game looks even better with the rain hitting and building on your screen as your wipers remove streaks, rolling down the bodywork and most importantly, puddling on the ground and spraying from rival cars. This has incorporated more physics within the simulation, as not only does the wet weather reduce tyre grip and control, but the simulation is carried out across all the various types of surfaces that make up a track. Overbanding on sections, painted rumble strips and more all have varied and reduced levels of grip factored into the new simulation. But this reaches a new height with its marketed and often confused 3D puddles. These are not a 3D physical model and are just the same reflective texture map on the surface as before, but they are now a full 3D physics calculation that handles aquaplaning, or as Americans would call it, hydroplaning. This is the occurrence of the tyre tread no longer making any contact with the surface to allow the grooves to push the water out of the way, enabling your tyres to grip. Instead, with the depth being greater than the tyre's contact patch and momentum causes the car to simply slide over the water with zero friction and therefore akin to riding on marble. The simulation ice. takes into account the wheels as they touch this and the direction drive it is impacted at. Just having one side of the car aquaplane causes the other side to drive and push the car inwards. All four wheels and you simply lose full control briefly as you slide over and then have to counter it when you have some more friction contact with the road. This works very well and by no means the only time this has appeared in a game, it is one of the best and adds even more thought and skill to racing in these difficult conditions. As I myself have much experience on track, I know this all too well first hand and the simulation engine here is impressive and feels surprisingly accurate. 
I would love to see the team add motorcycles to its roster, as its simulation engine and efforts are stunning. They no longer take data from manufacturers only, and have their own simulation rig to test and improve its already superb physics engine. Along with the normal sun-drenched tracks and new nighttime racing complete with shadow casting headlights from all cars and reduced visibility certainly delivers a racer that punishes your mistakes as much as rewards your skill. Cars feel different and handle so from each other and within these very conditions which includes the same damage as you drive and collide meaning bumper cars are not always the best racing line. It enables a greater choice and skill to be used along with the visual presence it all delivers. It is a shame that dynamic changes from day to night and dry to wet and back again are not here, but maybe in the next release this will be something they strive towards. Sound is again decently handled with the rain patter dulled on interior views or engine roars change. and the damage as you collide are accompanied by metallic clunk and scrape but it never extends beyond previous games and other modern races as there is only so much you can do within the constraints of a racing game hearing the echo of distant exhaust roars as the music plays is a good example of its best use of sound processing that all works well to let you enjoy and feel the action as you race but visually it has had to make some sacrifices as you would expect of such lofty performance goals and minuscule render budget. It must be stressed that these high frame rates in modern engines are not an easy target to hit and affect both CPU and GPU alike along with the entire game design choices, even more so with a fixed hardware spec. The previously mentioned loss of real time weather and lighting is one such sacrifice, along with a much less intensive anti aliasing solution that Horizon 2's previous and incredibly clean 4x MSAA choice. Here, the direct EQAA choice is made mostly due to the fact it is a hardware solution within the AMD powered consoles, and that within the lower level API of these can also be fully controlled and a programmable sample solution. This means that you can improve and tailor its coverage as you need for both geometry coverage and colour samples. But here the choice looks very similar to 5 and at times almost lacking coverage with the obvious loss on textures and shader passes causing issues but even played old geometry can have some bigger areas of noise at times. The game is a cleaner and more refined display than Forza 5 but most of this comes from the greatly improved texture work and filtering and PBR shader improvements than any real anti-aliasing solution. But filtering has taken a bigger increase, with 5 looking like it ran little to no filtering but the team here have certainly balanced this much better. With filtering being something you can apply at a per texture level it certainly looks like this has been wisely chosen, with roads, pavements and walls looking much cleaner than before from the normal oblique angle of races and the green grass texture never looking to be running the same almost zero filtering as it would be a waste. Texture quality is far higher and the lighting is greatly improved over the previous games. Specular highlights stand out far better and objects appear far more realistic along with the additional night racing and shadows. The only letdown is the night racing sections though which all have a very flat look and no depth in the darkness. Much of this is due to the lack of any real post processing effects running across the game. There's no real depth of field. This also comes across in the daytime racing with no atmospheric scattering present in the sunny distant views. The baked in lighting solution is the sacrifice of such a rock solid and unwavering performance. But there are some nice touches with the cube map reflections and the colour bleed through the flags affecting the shadows and the cars as they drive through. This isn't entirely accurate but it's a very nice touch and looks great in action. The mixture of screen space and cube map reflections is good in the game but sometimes noticed. And this is just a clever use of cube maps regularly used in racing games. You can see where they pop in and pop out as those pro points are hit. But overall, visually, it is a treat and there's so many nice things going on in this game which needs to be stressed is so impressive with the performance rates that it's hitting. The rain is again its standout with the bonnet view showing up a very nice depth of field affected raindrop touch as they hit and reduce, even refracting the bonnet texture within them when in range. Sadly, the colour refraction does not extend beyond this and the other screen space and cubat effects are all used well. But the weather effects are actually much better than the one seen in Forza Horizon 2 and that runs at half the frame rate. Cars all have real time reflections on road surfaces as they drive or kick up spray as does your bonnet as you drive along with a simple but effective noise map added to the rougher parts of the surface within its roughness calculation that gives the reflection a more blurred and confused look with clear puddles offering a much cleaner reflection which looks great. Alpha effects get used far more with dampness hanging over the grassy areas which are both a visual and gameplay addition. 
The tyre walls also have a much greater calculation of physics as when they are struck they now bounce and can even roll down the racetrack, all bouncing around from impact. But track marshals are made of a much sterner material and are completely unfazed by any collision. Come at me bro! You got nothing. Turn 10 have delivered a decent update and upgrade over its previous games. This is still the same Forza you know and love, many tracks return from the last game but only a selection have night or wet race options. Car numbers have increased now with 24 cars on track and although a much needed lot can be noticed occasionally as you race the same clustered Ford Plus engine that powered the previous two games has seen improvements and iteration from each game to enable it to deliver its most accurate and exciting racer yet. But up against other racers like its more open Horizon game and Slightly Mad Studios very good project cars means that we'll have to push onwards and harder as it is chased by the pursuing pack if it wants to keep its crown of top tier podium racer on the Xbox One. But if you are a petrol head looking for a pretty challenging and above all else rock solid performing and impressive racer then Turn 10 may have just delivered you an early Christmas present. As always, I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this. If you did, then please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate each and every one of you that does. Leave all your thoughts and your feedback below. I'll be sure to check back and reply as soon as possible. You guys and girls take care, race hard, drive safe, and most importantly of all, always finish first. I'll see you soon on the next one.